morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Total back again with some Shogun 2. Follow the Samurai Scramble for the Far East mod. And we're here with the Prussian Campaign. Oh, God. Um, a mouthful. Um, uh, we are in the next turn after our climatic, climatic battle at um, Aga, Amagasaki. And as of right now, our northern army is sieging <coughs> Miyagi. Our southern armies are just going wild and just uh, freaking out. Uh, while attacking all of um, the rest of the British territories, now they only have uh, one small island. Um, the, uh, the Netherlands just take taken um, Masakua, Masakua, I think, and they're just gonna be uh, staying put. Not a bad idea, except for the problem is um, it's gonna be problematic to get that place back. The only British settlement that is left is Sanda, and we're currently gonna. Finish the siege? I think we are. Um, <coughs> sorry guys. A uh, little cough right there. And I think we're just gonna auto resolve. We have because one we have way more numbers and yeah. I'm also gonna quick save because why not? Um, saving progress is very important. And well, we've lost 437 while they lost the entire garrison, so that's wonderful. Uh, this place also has our t uh, barracks, uh, infantry barracks, uh, almost everything. So that is 100% impressive. And there is still this one, two British armies, uh, one uh, near the beach and one on this island of uh, Aw Awaji. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, yeah. I'm gonna try to assassinate their remaining geishas and hopefully that's gonna work. Because if it doesn't, it's gonna look pretty bad. Assassination failed, so great. Um, that's terrible. We have rebels for the first time. These rebels are the only rebels that have showed up in my entire campaign. And it's kind of interesting because, like, for some reason, um, I don't get rebels a lot. Um, the only rebels that we see are jokes. So, yeah. Uh, recruit a falling unit in Nagita. My lord, enemies are upon us in Harpoon province, and yet we barely have enough troops defending our capital. There are no enemies around, except for the Northern Alliance, which on all sides I'm invading, so that's interesting. That's interesting. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna produce a lifeguard cavalry, and I think, because um, I need some good heavy horses that can punch through enemy lines. And once, obviously, guys, um, these lifeguards are having these massive uh, breastplate or crassier. And they literally are gonna just charge and kill anyone in their way. Once again, uh, Crassiers and uh, lifeguards, for my case, are these uh, guys with massive horses and massive stuff that just plow through enemy ranks. And a few seconds ago, we could have seen that our, our remaining objectives were, were to take uh, another settlement called uh, Yashimaru, which is uh, held by currently held by the Yodo. So that's gonna be a problem. Or technically, someone allies with them because we just uh, helped them in their war against the United Kingdom. And yeah, it's not a pretty sight to have your allies fight for you and then you betray them in the back. You do get punished in this game. Uh, whether it is with, um, how do I put it in a nice way, whether it is with diplomatic points or yeah, stuff like that. Um, so that's interesting. Eventually, if there's like only two to three or four to five um, factions left, they're probably almost always gonna declare war on you no matter what you do. So at that point, uh, who cares about loyalty? Uh, you can just betray them. Stuff like that, but uh, we're not at the late late game. There's still a lot of factions left, including um, the Russians, the Chinese, the Koreans. Um, we literally have the Netherlands who are the biggest problem. And we are facing a lot of other Japanese factions, the French, which are also there in, uh, in the north. And yeah, that's going to be problematic, so yes. The British decide to um, help the rebels, uh, no surprise, at Setsu. Um, the, the Dutch are going to help me in the sense that they're going to do stuff with um, the British army that is currently at the, essentially the beach. Um... The Northern Alliance reinforced their other army, and uh, yeah, everything is going well and crazy. Um, the rebels decide to raid my farmland, stuff like that, so I don't have a choice, I have to fight them. A person is eager to serve, apparently. There's a lot of rebellions mounting up rest and stuff like that, but yeah, who cares. Uh, yes, I have to enlist this guy, who is um, gonna be at my home base. Uh, am I gonna look for who it is? And his name is, wait for it, wait for it, Paul. <laughs> of all the names I've been given, 
Like, Paul is literally one of the most simplest names I can get. Like, literally out of... Oh my god, like... You have Christian, you have Friedrich, Friedrich Albert, you have Ralph, you, you literally have all these wonderful names, and then we have Paul. Yeah. Uh, and then we also have Boris, of course, why not? Um, I'm gonna kind of either auto-resolve, but I'm gonna continue the siege because, um... It's not winter yet, and it, when it is winter, it's gonna be uh, problematic. But I'm gonna quick save this one, and I'm gonna auto resolve because there is no way in heck we're gonna take heavy casualties assaulting this this small place. Um, to my surprise, it's actually not that bad lo losing 62. Um, yeah, and obviously I'm gonna. Uh, some guys decided, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, Sigmund. <laughs> Great. Okay, we have Paul Sigmund to our new as our new generals. Yeah, I think I kind of in the north I definitely have more generals than troops. But in the south, I have... It's pretty equal, so yeah. Uh, we're gonna try to assassinate. We're also trying to get this army, this get this rebel army off the field. Yeah, I have no idea what it says on the flag because I don't read Japanese, so I can't tell you. Um, but, yeah. No, I don't see a lot of factions with words on their... Um, words on their, uh, like, uh, characters on their uh, flag, so that's, that's thankful. The Aizu literally, like, I literally think that the Aizu character is, I don't know what the Aizu character is, so I can't really uh, tell you that, but, um, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, obviously the Aizu is the first faction that we destroyed off the bat, so don't need to worry about them anymore. And they're, like, so afraid of me now that they're on this island. Um, what else is going on? Nothing else, really. Um... Yeah, I do, I do technically have a fleet, but my fleet is so far away that by the time it arrives, it's going to be problematic. And we're going to be doing other stuff with our um, commanding general. So yes, um, we're going to move this army back. We're going to have some troops scared to Mbizen, and we're going to move him back to Harmina, which people are really upset for obvious reasons. They were... Uh, they support the British, now they have to support us. Technically, we're all Europeans, so, um... Isn't technically you're the same, but obviously, um, that's gonna be different. Maybe the, they like British colonial rule more than they love my colonial rule. But, um, technically in the First World War, like, when you think about it, um... I can't say a lot about the British Empire, but, like, in German South... South Africa, the, the, the Germans did a pretty good job. Obviously, doing a good job really means that you have the support of the native people. Obviously, I, be, I can be completely 100% wrong, but, uh, ooh, uh, yeah. The army is going to sally out of, um... And... We're going to wreck them, because we have lifeguards. Yeah, literally, we wrecked them to the very last person. Um, yeah, they have zero remaining, so we're going to peacefully occupied. There is an enemy army I'm just kind of trying to wipe them out and stuff like that. Whew, not a lot of battles as you see, can see in the late game because oh great. Um, the Yodo, the Wakiyama decide to do a good thing and uh, Wakiyama in particular decide to go to war. Can't really do that and the uh, enemy is just raiding around so that's a problem. Everything's a problem. Enemy raids and setsu so, so. Guys, can't, 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 can't. This is impossible now. Winter! Great. At least the enemy army will be taking starvation. Oh, no, they don't. Wait. Why aren't they taking... Why aren't rebels taking... Well, anyway, we're just going to delete them off the field. Um, literally, their entire army is made of the spear and uh, terrible yaris. And we're just going to shoot them to pieces. I don't think we even take a single casualty. Which is impressive because their army is... Pretty massive. Well, that's... That's, um... Yeah, that's, that's, that's the end of them. Now I, I do have to upgrade a lot more stuff, and, oh god, yeah, this entire province is literally ablaze. Um, not a joke, literally. Um, yeah, I have Sonda who is ablaze, this province that is ablaze, and this, oh, it's the only thing I can fix, which is funny. Um, yeah, this place I can also fix, so that's, that's, uh, we're getting the fires under control, gentlemen. Yeah, um... And yeah, we're trying to mass up somewhat of an army in Harmina. Although, yeah, can we exempt them? Yes, we are going to exempt them because we need money. <sighs> oh, 
A good old day and showing to where everyone literally hates you and decides to, you know what, oh, uh, we're not going to declare war on you yet, but you were pretty close. And everyone hates me, yeah. This is the problem with um having a large empire, is that everyone literally hates you, so, yeah. Um, my northern army is going to try to take out this remaining northern alliance army. And uh, we're not going to quite reach it, so I'm just going to go back to Uzen. And because people literally in Uzen hate me, I'm gonna have my army in Miyagi and uh, decide to yeah, yeah uh, get this army out. Uh, we're gonna repair a lot of stuff because yeah, Miyagi is also another province that um yeah stuff. Uh, we're gonna destroy this army army, and you can see with the Japanese, uh, uh, the Northern Alliance does have some new units, meaning that um yeah uh. Our enemies around us, or factions around us, are starting to modernize, which is not a good thing. At least not for us, because we're going to be at war for, with most of these countries. So, yes. Obviously, um... I want to go for you, my phone, but... Anyway, obviously, um, the, the more modernization that happens to your uh, potential uh, neighbors, means that the more problems that you're going to have in the late game. Um, I don't think I need to explain why, I just... I. I just think that it's obvious for me to say that. So yes. Elsewhere, everything looks to be going good. Um, good, good, good. Everything looks to be good. Just checking stuff up. Just making everything tip-top shape, and then we're gonna end the turn. And yeah, I just realized that East. The, this problem is ESO, is that worth me? And literally, there is literally, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna engage in a naval battle, a 2v1, and you might be thinking, oh, great, great. Ah, uh, finally a naval battle. Well, actually, in Shogun 2, naval battles are not that bad. They're actually quite pretty. As you can see right here, it's actually pretty stunning. Um, obviously, all these ships have been modded in. For those that play Fall of the Samurai, you, you obviously can't tell. But yeah, a nice flag, um, most of this stuff has been modded in, and like, a lot of detail has been paid attention to. Like, like, uh, yeah, gun port stuff and that. And literally guys, look, look at the amount of detail that has been put. I'm just gonna shut up and I'm just gonna let you guys watch. I don't know if they're, these are the actual uniforms of the Prussian Navy, but um, from what I know of the Prussian Navy, um, which I don't know much, it's it's actually no, I don't know much about the Prussian Navy. I know a lot about the army, but not the navy. Um, the Japanese ships that we see here are two, and they're basically um, Ashigaru put on ships. That's the best way I can explain it. And literally, they're, they're these extremely light ships, but for some reason, the auto resolve says I'm gonna be doing a terrible job, so I'm gonna prove that wrong. Uh, very nice design with the ships, like, um, this is, these are literally the smallest ships that, um, the Japanese could, the, the, the most basic ship that the Japanese can bring, I think. And, uh, yeah, once again, nice attention to detail, and yes, guys, um, this has been modded in. So once again, thank you for the development team, and yeah. I'm trying to find the captain in this scenario, and I don't know if it's the guy on the right or the guy on the left. But judging uh, the detail of the, the what, what they're wearing, I think this is the guy on the left. Or the right, so yeah. Just trying to get, zoom the angle of the camera in. Yep, it's a very nice uniform. Well, not a uniform. Technically, Japanese armies don't have uniforms, but okay. Um, we're gonna load up our cannons and prepare to open fire because we are now well within range, so we're just gonna pre prepare to open fire. And and okay, that was that was a volley, but you didn't get to see much because the riggings of the ship blocked the shot. So that's unfortunate. Um, I'm gonna make this maneuver called this head straight for the enemy and then uh, use a shot that I will tell you guys about later. But anyway, with that one volley, um, this ship is. This ship is somewhat somewhat damaged, and uh, yeah, um, as you can see, or you could see, um, yeah, this other ship is not that damaged, but um, it's still going straight at us. Um, yeah, as you can see, there is some debris caused by, um, yeah, what's 
yeah, the, the falling wood off this ship. But, um, we're just gonna watch as Canister rains in. Oh god, dear god. Um, for those that have are wondering, yeah, Canister like, um, on land battles cause fire. And, <laughs> speak of the devil. Um, yeah. Um, the, 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 the guys on board do take it out very quickly because, once again, um, they are a very small ship. But it set the, it sets them invulnerable. I'm gonna focus fire on the only ship that's charging straight at me, and is this ship? We're gonna open fire with canister. But yeah, that was pretty devastating. Um, the ship is automatically on fire, and at this point, the enemy decides that yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave. Um, the enemy you can see on board is literally panicking, and they decide to literally surrender a few seconds. Um, that ship, I, the ship in front of this ship is already surrendering, and this ship is, yeah, gonna surrender. We actually captured the both of them, and yeah, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, um, I'm gonna keep them because I need to somewhat enlarge my navy, although you technically can argue that these two ships are literally useless. Except for the men on board, of course. Um, I decided not to disband them because there is a use. Although I don't see a big one. But we're gonna move my, our navy out. Elsewhere, we still have this British army on the battlefield, so yeah, um, it's gonna be slightly problematic to deal with. Don't know what to really do with it, um, it's technically stuck, and I um, don't know if I should engage it. I technically can engage it, but um, if I engage it, then technically everything is gonna break through, and uh, yeah, stuff is gonna happen, so I do not want that to happen. Um, Everything else is going just well, as we can see. Um, there's nothing much to do, just it's a lot of management. And technically all big scale, big sized empires, technically you all have to do some a lot of management left and right. So yeah, um, just nothing much I can really talk about. We're gonna end the turn. And we're just gonna wait. There is literally nothing that is interesting going on. There is literally nothing that is going to be happening. So yeah, um, it's quite kind of boring at this point, and it is kind of boring. There is no one powerful to rival us unless it's the Dutch. But uh, yeah, if a war happens, it's not gonna look pretty. Like literally, it's safe to say I have the northern part of Japan and they have the southern part of Japan. Technically, you can see I have more land mass, but um, they have more cities. Because most of the important cities are in the south and I have most of the... But I have more land than north. Which, technically, if you think about it, um, the Dutch don't have railroads, I have railroads, but transporting my armies still is a pain, although better with railroads, so in case of a war with the Dutch, it's not that bad. Um, we do. We all have our advantages and disadvantages, obviously. Um, so I don't really know what who's who's has the advantage. I guess no one really has the advantage. It just comes down to how many troops we have. Which I think I can safely say I have more troops. Uh, if you, if especially if you combine my northern and southern armies, they have a lot more troops just in them. Um, but anyway, we're just gonna move on in Wate. I do not care what happens in Miyagi. Uh, people will hate me, but hey, a lot of people hate me, so they're not the last ones. <laughs> um, literally, this title of this, um, this, um, this episode is gonna be literally called Swarm of, um, Swarm of Protests Everywhere. I'm literally being swarmed with protests. People are not happy in this place. Um, I'm gonna send my cavalry, uh, like, uh, like with all cavalry that you have to scout out the enemy and we're just gonna scout them out and then we're gonna see what the heck they do obviously cavalry is moves faster than infantry so on the campaign map they cover more space so that's wonderful um yeah once again i'm just checking stuff to make sure everything's fine and um for some reason i have this paranoia that um literally if if my empire is too big i think there's something wrong with it like it's just straight out right paranoia or you guys can call I'm some, somewhat crazy, but I'm literally checking left, right, center, down, everywhere. Um, I literally think um, there's a lot of problems for me that I just don't see. Um, this is especially true for Three Kingdoms, like um, Three Kingdoms Civil War. 
Yeah, I'm literally checking. Top, right, center, left, bottom, bottom, everywhere. Literally everywhere. But, um, Shogun 2 is pretty peaceful. Um, for the Yoda, we're gonna do nothing, because we technically, they technically have two provinces, but I'm not ready to go to war yet. Uh, I guess I have bigger fish to fry, and that is the British. They have two full-stack European armies, and yeah, that is gonna be the biggest problem I'm gonna have. And also, there's the East, East, um, the Kum Kumata, I think, if that's their name. Uh, Kum, Kum, Kuwana, I think. Kuwana. And they're just gonna do stuff. They're gonna be a pain. Um, I do have an army. We're gonna... Uh, it's gonna be attacking Issa. We're gonna use this cavalry, uh, eventually, to, um, harass them. But yes, we're gonna end the turn and see what the British do. They have a lot more geishas, which I... Yeah. A Dutch army just crosses the... What do you call it? The, the, the border, and that freaks me out because... Uh, allies are not really allies, and enemies are definitely not who you appear to be. Everywhere is revolting. People are not happy. I wouldn't be if I were them, and uh, we're just gonna move on to Iwate. And, uh, yeah, Iwate is actually the home province of the... Yeah, never mind. Never mind. I misspoke. Um, I don't know who the heck they're the home province of, but yeah. Oh, we're gonna siege, uh, the Sioux, the Sioux castle, that's wonderful, that's weird. We're gonna siege the Sioux, we're gonna quick save, and we're gonna continue the siege. Nothing we can do there, we cannot assault the castle because I do not have enough heavy artillery. So we're just gonna be sitting there. Um, elsewhere, uh, we have, we're just trying to fix things up, if we can. And yeah, we're gonna fix a harbor, oh, sorry, I don't know what that is, um, but uh, I, we're just gonna fix stuff up, and yeah. Um, this British army right here, I'm not gonna do anything about it. Um, I'm just gonna tr try to cross this place, and we're hopefully gonna solve everything by... Yeah, crossing and then ending the British once and for all. Once again, they're stuck on an island, but however, the good thing for us is that they don't have a navy. So, yep, um... Sorry, sadly, in this case, the Britannia does not rule the waves. And we definitely do not rule the waves, the Dutch do, which is kind of weird. Um, well, they technically... Almost every major country in Europe technically did rule the waves. You literally have, well, in certain places, of course, you have the Spanish, who were replaced by the English, who were somewhat replaced almost by the Dutch, and then, obviously, the English, once again. You have the Swedes, who were primarily in the Baltics, you have the Ottomans, who I don't, I don't even... Need, I don't think I should say where they were focused on. They were focused mainly in the Middle East. And then you have almost every faction everywhere else. Um, you have the Russians focused mainly in the Baltics after they defeated the Swedes. But yeah, we're just gonna end the turn and we, yeah, we're gonna wait for stuff. But uh, speaking about that, where yeah, um, a lot of powers have been just uh, cutting the lid with literally um, being power hungry and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we're gonna we're gonna be defending against its enemy army, but um, as a matter of fact, I think it was the Tsar Peter the Great who said um, he co who controls the waves control the world. And technically, if you really think about it, the world's landmass is not equal to is definitely not equal to the world's oceans, which the oceans are more, which the, I think the British and most other major factions have realized it by now, so yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, in this battlefield, we're just preparing to meet the enemy assault, and I'm gonna shut up. After talking about a bunch of nothingness for a long time, the enemy is um, gonna be assaulting us. Um, this is the enemy army. Surprise, surprise to absolutely no one. This enemy army is pretty much vetted up with um, literally terrible guys. Well, no, not terrible guys, but like terrible units. They have a lot of these uh, levy infantry. This militia is probably the best unit. They look somewhat professional. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I think these are, um, what do you call it? These are the models for line infantry and regular, um, Shogun 2 Follow the Samurai, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, they're gonna push up, and my guys are gonna open fire. You can see my guys loading the cannon, and uh, yeah, the enemy has some artillery, but not as much as, well, actually, no, they have the, almost the exact same number of artillery. Oh, no, they have more artillery than me, my bad. Um, my cannons are not opening firing, are, are not firing. Uh, for some reason, most of their shots are duds, which are a terrible factor. But after a few touches, here and there, left and right, uh, our guys op get to open fire. And as the enemy draw nearer, our guys open up fire. Uh, as they closer, we're going to use canister shot on them, so it's going to look wonderful. Once again, duds going off, like it's really a pain sometimes, like literally you think your, your shots are going to kill hundreds of men and then it's a dud. Um, yeah, some canister shots are going off left and right. And a lot uh, are doing a lot of damage, technically. Um, obviously this is so far away so I can't really tell, but um, just from the, the amount of men falling that you can see in the distance, we're actually doing a lot of damage. The enemy army is made of the, this this most elite unit, is probably this militia that is right here. Um, once again, these models are taken off from the line infantry and regular fall of the Samurai Shogun too. And they look absolutely interesting. This is actually the army of the Shogun. Um, I don't have... Um, the helmets... Well, actually, no, I don't think those are actually helmets, but the headwear, the the, the, the uniforms, is pretty much um, a Shogun army. Imperial infantry are, look totally different. Um, and for those that are watching my FR Conquest series, yeah, they look different. But these guys are once again holding the uh, 300 years old Portuguese matchlocks, which I don't have. I don't think I have to tell you guys why the heck they are it's so terrible. But along the entire line, these guys are just holding Portuguese uh, matchlocks and they're just opening fire on my lines. Uh, most of the shots, to absolutely no surprise, are hitting either way above or way below. And what shots do hit don't really do that much damage because I do have stakes in front. Not that they help with the bullets or anything, but uh, it's better to, than nothing. Also, canister shot is ripping through these guys. Um, yeah. Uh, my men are not really focused firing on this uh, militia, which uh, they should be, but um, because there's a long drawn out line battle, um, both sides are just opening fire and gunning each other down as fast as possible. My men are obviously better, um, because they are uh, marines and yeah, these guys are just going to get gunned down eventually. I find out that line battles in Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai Scramble for the Far East mod are way longer. Um, I think that has been purposely planned, and uh, yeah. Do I blame it? No. Um, some battles in Shogun 2 are just way too quick. But it is also test the ability for the, uh, the commander in, the commander who is commanding the armies to think. Um, yeah. Eventually I decided to charge in my cavalry because why not? Um, there is an exposed flank and we're just gonna charge in my cavalry. Once again, uh, even with this small of a distance, uh, these guys do get a few shots off, which is terrifying. Losing a few horses left and right, and then we finally charge in. Um, this, the charge is not that great. Um, it's actually kind of terrible if you think about it from distance and for the speed of the charge. These, the, technically, how it should work is that a few of these guys are sent flying. But hey, um, my guys are like horsemen. Uh, they're colonial cavalry, so do not expect them to do wonderful things. Yeah, um, these guys are going to perform quite well in melee. Um, the enemy is obviously going to be performing quite terrible. Um, yeah, so, yeah. This duel is quite of, kind of interesting. I'm just gonna see who wins. Oh no, they left. <laughs> um, we're gonna order my cavalry to retreat because in the back you can see a lot of this, um, uh, guys with spears charging straight at us and the most, and the most, and the thing that I, cavalrymen are most afraid of is guys with holding spears. Or long wooden sticks, but yeah. Long wooden sticks are the next biggest threat. The bi first biggest threat is a musket with a bayonet on top, and after that it goes to be a spear and then a bamboo stick. I mean, I mean a stick, and uh, yeah. Um, 
Um, you kind of you you see me kind of do a mistake here and there, and that is charging into this um spearman. And I thought I was literally charging into these uh the the the, the rifles. And yeah, I kind of made a mistake, so yeah. Um. Anyway, we win the battle, losing that 98 guys. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, the enemy lose almost their entire army. A quarter of their, uh, two thirds of their army is destroyed, killed in action. Uh, we also captured our artillery, our curly piece, which is kind of embarrassing. Like, um, well, technically, I find it embarrassing because um, now that thing is going to turn be turned against you. And uh, yeah, I'm also one of those Napoleonic dudes who believe. Who believe um, the dude who said you may abandon your your wounded you you may abandon your horses, but you may not abandon your cannons. Heck, you may even abandon your colors, which is like yeah. But uh, cannons, uh, they're most useful in the sense that um, that um, they're a machine, which means they can be targeted uh, by your enemies against you. So that's gonna be a problem. We're gonna auto resolve Isu because I have no intentions of fighting this battle. We're gonna quick save just just in case that it fails. And yeah, I find this is very favorable towards me. Uh, we lose nine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm definitely not gonna lose nine in any castle assault. Um, there is just no way, and the reason is simply because arrow towers kill the majority of my dudes. And anyway, that's it. Pretty much for it for this episode. So have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.